Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duo Sarm here today, back with another astrophotography video. So tonight is the first clear night in a long time. The moon's not coming out for another two hours here, which means I have some good time to take something that's a pretty easy target that I've done before, which is going to be the North American Nebula. So I did put some pictures of this up on my Instagram a while back now. This will be my first time visiting it again, and my first time looking at it with the longer lens. So I did it with a shorter lens last time. We're going to try and get a little higher magnification this time around. I also have my new astrophotography setup for this, which we'll go through here in a little bit. But let's go take a look outside. So as you can see, it is absolutely gorgeous out right now. Sun setting, a few clouds out in the distance, but that's going away here. Otherwise, crystal clear skies all around. And the target we're going to be shooting tonight is right there just above the tree line. Although you can't really see it in a little cell phone camera, but it promise it's there. But anyway, I'm going to get to setting everything up here and uh, do a little time lapse for you. All right, so now a quick like overview of the new setup here. We have a guide scope telescope that has a camera attached to the back of it that is feeding into my laptop here that I can use to basically tell the mount head here how to adjust itself to keep pointing towards the stars. We have our camera that I broke the camera screen on so that I couldn't use the touchpad anymore, also wired into this same laptop here. That way I can control the focus and picture taking on it using the laptop. It's all sitting on top of the same star tracker here that we've had for a while, which is the star adventure right here. And again, all of that is feeding into the laptop once again to be controlled. So as far as our setup procedure now, what I do is I go into the software here and basically find a star. So right now I have a star centered in the middle of that box. You can't really tell though. Zoom in on it. And then I can adjust the focus over here with these controls to bring the stars into or out of focus. So you can see right there, that's out of focus. And that's out of focus. But that is probably about as good of focus as I'm gonna get right there. And now that I'm in focus, what I need to do is find the star that I actually want to shoot, which again is going to be the star Deneb. So this might not look like much to you guys, but basically what I want to shoot tonight is located right in this little band of three stars here. That's the bright star Deneb right up there at the top. And uh, yeah, so I want to shoot like this whole region, which means I need to move the camera up just a little bit more so that the frame um, is more centered on this region. So almost there. All right, so now that I got my shot framed, one last thing left to do is to focus it. So I'll try and get this star nice and sharply focused. I'd say that's pretty darn near pinpoint to me. And then that's actually it for this app. So I don't need this program anymore on my camera. Now I can worry about setting up the uh, heat strap so that it doesn't fog over the lens. Now the next thing to set up is the auto guider, which is pretty straightforward. I just need to connect to each of the different components that I've already set up here. Then hit the start syncing button down in the corner. It's gonna start taking pictures of the stars. All I gotta do is hit this find button right here. It'll pick out the best star, pick the star I want to guide on, and set up the calibration. And this is just going to run. And after that setup, it's going to show you how far off your scope setup is drifting. So the blue line is the one that is being corrected for, since my mount can only rotate in one direction. If I had a better mount, I could uh, correct the other direction as well. So you can see the blue line is starting to be stabilized, but the red's just going to continue to drift away and away and away throughout the night. But still, um, as long as I can keep one direction good, that will make me happy. So now that I got this set up, I can move on into the next thing, which is actually setting up to take pictures. So in this program, I go ahead and connect it to my uh, camera right there, the EOS RP. Then I'm going to go to my guider and connect to my auto guider, which I set up a second ago. And that should just automatically connect and start feeding in the data into this program now. So you can see that those same two lines I was looking at before, they're sitting there now. Next up, I can head on over into the imaging tab and start setting up actually taking pictures. So just as like a generic start right here, what I'm gonna do is take a 10 second exposure and just take a picture. And after that is done, it'll show up here on the screen and I can see what I got as far as an image. So we got this like yellow hue because I have the lights on behind me. Uh, we'll turn those out when we get started. But the actual region that I wanna shoot is right in here. So you can see right over in here, that same little pattern of stars, you might or may not be able to make it out, but this is what we were going for here. So now I'm gonna go take a picture and turn off the lights and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you can sort of make it out, but right here you see the edge of this like cloud right here. It's not a cloud, it's the North American Nebula. Um, so that means I'm actually a little out of frame because you can see I'm trailing off of the edge of the, off of the edge of the image. 
So I need to adjust my framing a little bit and push the image just a little bit up. So, um, but after I get that set up, I'm gonna start taking a bunch of pictures and it's gonna be pretty boring. So I guess we'll just fast forward to the editing part. All right, so I ended up taking 45 pictures at a minute and 40 seconds each before the moon came out and ran them through the program Deep Sky Stacker. This actually isn't on my main computer, so I don't have any footage of it, but it's pretty straightforward. You just put the pictures into the program and hit go. And after that, you get a picture that looks something like this. So yeah, pretty dark. But we're gonna work some magic here in GIMP, again, free photo editing software here to make it look a bit prettier. So starting off by going to the Colors tab and clicking Levels, we're gonna drag this slider all the way down to kinda balance the picture, and by balance, I mean make it brighter. Go back into the Levels tool, and then we're gonna drag the dark side up a little bit. And you can now start to vaguely make out the sort of shapes that we saw earlier. So we're gonna drag this slider down a little bit more, and this one up a little bit more, and now we can see it pretty well. So next, we're gonna go back into that tool and click Levels again, but this time we're gonna change each color and we're gonna balance the colors. Basically, what I'm looking to do is center the peaks on each other. So there's my red peak. You can see my green peak is shifted to the left a little bit, so we're gonna add a little bit more green to the image. And if I go to the blue, you can see, again, compared to the red, it's shifted way off, so we're gonna add a lot more blue as well. So maybe something like that. And we're just gonna hit OK again, and we're gonna check that again under the Colors tab Levels. So there's our red, there's our green. Blue's still off a little bit, so we need a little bit more blue into the picture. Go back into the colors, levels, check red to blue. Still off a little bit, could use a little bit more blue. Go back into the colors, levels, red, green, blue. Pretty much all in line now, so we're good on that. And we're gonna go ahead and drag the dark end up a little bit more. Oops, that was only on blue though, so I gotta make sure I do it on everything. <laughs> Drag the dark end up a little bit more. Bring the brightness up a little bit more. Then we're gonna go into the Colors Curves tool here. And we're going to use this tool to more finely uh, bring out the image a bit here. So I'm gonna keep the brighter end, fix it a little bit brighter. Darker end a little bit darker. Kind of bring that in a little bit. And uh, it's looking okay. Um, I think that looks pretty good right there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK on that, and then we're gonna crop out the image a little bit. So you can see that because I used a round lens, we've got this sort of uh, vignette, vignette, I don't know how to pronounce the word. Um, but you can see we've got this effect around the edges of the image um, where it's kind of getting cropped by the lens. So we're gonna kind of just cut it like here. And I have it set to one to one, so I can actually undo that and get rid of the fixing, but. Um, kind of just crop out where the lens is starting to go so you can see that I'm pointing on the screen like you can see it but You can see like up in here. It starts to go right there. It starts to go But if I crop it here. I've got a pretty uh, Pretty good image there next thing we're gonna do is go back into the curves tool here and kind of drag the dark up a little bit more to kind of Get a bit more contrast there and now it really looks like a nightscaped image here You can see your dark sky you got the cool little nebula sitting there I'm gonna go back into the Colors tool and go in for Brightness and Contrast and give the image a tiny bit more contrast. Tiny little bit and a tiny bit less brightness to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. And then to aid in the redness, we're gonna go into the Saturation side and add a bit of saturation to it. Can't really tell, but it does make a difference. Just, that looks good enough to me. And that's it, pretty quick little, quick and, quick and fast editing of, uh, of the image to kind of get the North American Nebula that we wanted to shoot. We got the bright star of Deneb up there. This is actually the Pelican Nebula, but you can't really see it too much. But yeah, that was the uh, the target for the night, and that is the image that we got. Now, I already did post my edited version of this on my YouTube channel over in the Community tab, but I figured it'd be cool for you guys to see the whole process of getting this picture. It was a lot of work, and I think I got pretty close in my fast version of doing it to what I ended up putting up on the YouTube channel. But yeah. I wish I had more time to shoot this one because the camera was set up perfectly. You can see the stars look pretty good throughout the whole image. Uh, I just wish I had more time to kind of get more of the redness and the blues out of this image. It really all comes down to how long you can sit on a target, and unfortunately the moon was coming out, and I only got the two hours to shoot it. So hopefully later in the week or later this month I'll have a clearer shot with less moon out to be able to uh, get something better than this. But anyway guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you are new to my channel and you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, helps to grow the channel. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you all at the next YouTube video, the next Twitch livestream, or wherever I happen to see ya. Dice.